Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another science fiction and fantasy wrap up. For the most part, this is gonna be new 2021 releases and a lot of review copies, but I also have a backlist science fiction hidden gem that I'm so excited to talk about. And I describe hidden gems simply as books that do not get talked about enough on booktube. And I really wanna share all of these books with you. So let's get started. First, let's talk about that hidden gem. And so for science fiction, I want to recommend The Rig by Roger Levy. This is a multi point of view story that I would describe as a piece of epic science fiction, although it also could be described as a science fiction thriller. The story, as I mentioned, is told from multiple perspectives, but the main perspective is that of a young boy who at the beginning of the story is on this planet where they are heavily religious. And so he grows up very night Eve with these really rigid rules surrounding the control of technology. This is a coming of age story as the book follows his character as he ages and grows up. There is an incident that causes him to have his innocence stripped away a little bit and hence the coming of age that he is forced into adulthood perhaps too soon when he meets up with another young boy who changes his life. This book involves other characters who are working on this rig and you find out that in this future there are all these different planets that are interconnected and they communicate using the song which is their version of the internet however on the particular planet where this young boy lives they are very much closed off from that and again he's very innocent very naive and then of course he slowly gets integrated into the larger story that is happening this book involves so many interesting elements that come together in such creative ways. I've just never read a book like this. So it involves crime families and there is backstabbing. The use of the internet is very integral to the story and I love how it's described and imagined. I just thought it was so creative. The author also takes the time to introduce some future slang, which some people might find annoying. I personally loved. And so you get words that don't exist in today's language, but you're able to figure out its meaning based off of the context and I loved puzzling that out. It is a story again because it has multiple points of view. It just felt so epic in scale and I really encourage you to go in without knowing too much of the actual plot because that is what I found so fun about it is that it has an incredible start. It will grab your attention right from the beginning and I just wanted to see where it was going to go and I had no idea and so I just followed it through and this ended up being just one of those incredible stories. It was a time where I finished the book and I immediately started again and read the whole thing through and I can't remember the last time I've done that with a book but I really like this one I just can't stop thinking about it and if you know me I normally am turned off by naive young characters but this one worked really well because he doesn't stay naive long and his character growth in the story is fantastic so if that sounds good to you if you're looking for a science fiction book that is new or at least new to you fresh unique different and not the same story told over and over again. I really recommend this one. It was just so entertaining, so smart, so well plotted, and yeah, it's just a hidden gem that I'm really excited to share with you all today. Next up, let's talk about Elder Race by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is a science fiction novella that I received for review from Tor.com. And this is a story told over a few different perspectives. It takes place on a planet far away where we have an anthropologist who is studying a society that is older, as in it's more of a medieval style setting. And so he is studying their progression as they are slowly advancing. And then the story is also told from one of the people in that society who is going off to get help and assistance from a local sorcerer. Now from the synopsis, I was a little bit leery going into this only because I don't always get along with science fiction fantasy. However, this book is definitely more science fiction than fantasy, which is my personal preference. And when it was revealed what was going on with this book, I absolutely loved it. Without giving away too much, I'm gonna say that if you're a fan of Star Trek, particularly the brand of Star Trek in Next Generation, you will love this one. It kind of reads like a particular episode that I kind of love and I enjoy this one so much and particularly what I mean by if you like Star Trek is that there's a lot of episodes where they have the crew studying these societies from the outside and of course they want to follow the prime directive and 
and so they don't want to interfere. And that's where the anthropologist comes in because he's trying to study them but he doesn't want to actually affect the society. And it just makes for a really fun read. Adrian Tchaikovsky is just really smart how he plots this book, how it's written, the narrative is perfect, and I really enjoy this one. Just a book that I thought I would enjoy but I ended up really loving. Next up I want to talk about Inhibitor Face by Alistair Reynolds. This is the book that I received for review from Orbit Books. And this is a book that is part of the Revelation Space series but both the author and the marketing team at Orbit were both very explicit that it is a book that you can start with even if you have not read the previous books in the series. Without going too much into the plot, essentially this is set in a far-flung future where humanity is hiding out from artificial intelligence that are hunting them down trying to finish off humanity. The premise is really intriguing and I really like the main character Miguel. I thought that he was very compelling and was instantly someone that you could connect with. However, and I mean this in the kindest way possible, I think that the author and the marketing team were slightly wrong when it comes to the fact that this book did not perfectly stand alone as I hoped it would. I was certainly able to understand everything that was described in the book. I was never actually confused, but I really felt like I was missing out from the fact that I have not read the original Revelation Space trilogy or any of the spin-offs that are in this world yet. And that is my fault because when I was offered this for review, I could not help but jump on it because I've been very intrigued by Alistair Reynolds' work, but really I think that I need to go back and read those other books before going and giving this a proper review. So the short is that I enjoy this book to a point, but I felt like I was missing out and I felt like there was this whole other epic story and I was just reading the ending of it and I really want to experience it properly. So this is kind of the short review saying that I'm going to come back once I've done my homework and I will re-review this one for you. If you're a fan of Alistair Reynolds, the writing I think is just as strong as I've always heard his writing to be. I thought it was, yeah, very well done, great characters, all of that. But I think for me personally, I need to have more context in order to properly appreciate this one. If you've already read those other books, I'd say jump on in. I suspect you won't be disappointed. Next up, we have Stolen Earth by J.T. Nichols. This is a book that I received from Titan Books for review. This is a space opera set in a future where humanity has had to abandon Earth. That is because of global warming and environmental reasons, as well as a war that broke out with the artificial intelligence. They may have won and taken over the planet, and so humanity had to go elsewhere. This story is set in a future where there is a crew that is forced to go back to the planet and when they get there, well, maybe the story I told you isn't exactly what happened and you get to find out what that is. Now, I want to recommend this one to those of you that are newer to science fiction and are looking to start because I think that space opera is a really accessible place. Typically in books, including this one, there isn't a lot of focus on hard science. Instead, it's more about a ragtag group of people coming together having an adventure and so the themes and ideas are very accessible. I also like that this one to my knowledge is a standalone. It definitely reads like one and so it's quite short too and so it doesn't have the commitment of something that I love like The Expanse. So if you're looking to get into that one I think this one is very approachable. Right at the beginning of the story you have the characters in a classroom where a professor is literally teaching them the history of Earth and so you are clearly given all the information, all the world building that you need to know to understand this one. However, I will acknowledge that because I am someone who has read so much space opera, so much science fiction at this point, I did find this one to be a little bit surface level, a little bit predictable, and it's just simply the fact that I now appreciate or enjoy books that do more subtle world building and more complex characters, plots, all of that. But it worked perfectly fine and was a very, you know, good space opera. So if you're newer to science fiction, this is a great way to jump in. Next up, we have Glimmer by Marjorie B. Kellogg. This is a book that I received for review from Daw Books and this is set in a future where climate change has gotten to the point where the ice caps have melted and society is forever changed. We're essentially in a post-apocalyptic world. We are following a young girl named Glimmer 
who is a scavenger trying to survive in this post-apocalyptic future, specifically in the New York area. She is with another group of people who are all just trying to survive. Her role in this new group is again to gather supplies and bring them back. And so we just see how they are trying to survive in this future. So this is a book that definitely read like a video game for me, particularly something like The Last of Us 2, where you have a young female protagonist who is going around trying to get supplies, trying to survive. And there's a lot of focus on the interaction between her and her fellow workmates who are in the same boat as her. In terms of the story itself, I will say I did find it a little bit predictable, or at least just a plot that I have read many times before. And I didn't find anything particularly unique or different about this one. And I don't mean to criticize a book for that because not every book needs to reinvent a genre. But I found the characters to be likable, the story to be interesting, the writing to be good, but I just didn't fully connect with the story. And again, I think it was the fact that I was looking for something extra. But if you're looking for a post-apocalyptic story that is not necessarily incredibly negative, I thought that this one had a good glimpse of hope, which is definitely what we need in our current age. And so I really like the story. And again, I do think this one is accessible if you're newer to science fiction. It is set in a very close future. So there isn't a lot of fancy technology. If anything, the world has regressed. So again, it almost makes it more accessible. So if that sounds good, definitely recommend checking it out, especially again, if you like those survival type video games, this one definitely gave me similar vibes. Now, switching over to fantasy, I also received a bind up of the Tensrith series by Neon Yang. This is a collection of four novellas that were previously printed individually by Tor.com, which is where I received the review copy. And this is a really cool, queer, diverse, Asian-inspired world. And of the stories, I liked some of them more than others. They're all loosely connected. If you're gonna read all of them, you do wanna read them in order, but in some ways you can kind of pick and choose and each story does stand on its own. In fact, even the author admits that the first story in this collection and the second were put out or published on the same day. And so you really could read them in either order. My favorite of the stories first was The Black Tides of Heaven, which is the first one. And I liked it because it had a good focus on the world building which I really liked. So as people talk about, this is a really great queer story because it's set in a world where rather than at birth, people's gender are assigned to them based off of their biological parts. Instead, they are allowed to announce or decide their gender when they reach a certain age or when they feel that they identify as a particular gender or simply can stay genderless. I thought it was very open. In fact, I was like, why is the world not built this way already? That sounds like a really progressive way for the future future to go. So I thought that was really interesting and that was just kind of a side part to the story. But what I particularly loved most about the story was the world building surrounding the magic. So in the story they talk about the slack which I pictured as almost being like the force in Star Wars, this invisible force that allows them to do incredible things. And so with it people go to different schools in order to learn slack craft which exactly what it sounds is crafting using this force to create things and I thought that it was so creative, so cool. And so I really liked the first story because it had a lot of information about how that worked. And if you know me, I love good hard magic systems. I love those explanations so I could not get enough of that. The second story didn't work quite as well for me. It's essentially a monster hunting story which if you know me sounds like it should be right up my alley but I didn't connect with it as much. However, the third story I really loved and that is one that involves a sibling looking for their other half and what they find is just really really dark so not surprisingly I enjoyed that one quite a bit. I also liked it because of all the stories I found that that one had the strongest plot and that would be if I had a criticism of the series it's the fact that it's very much more focused on the ideas so again the queer world, the magic, and all of these cool ideas that are introduced. But in terms of a cohesive plot, some of the stories were fairly weak in that area, or rather the plot felt like it kind of took a backseat to the ideas that the author wanted to discuss. So I overall enjoyed these, but I would be more interested in seeing this author do something in a full novel that is more plot heavy, because again, I think the ideas that they bring are so interesting, but I am a very plot-driven reader, and so 
that was the one thing that I found a little bit weak or lacking in some of the stories within this collection, but I definitely would recommend it if that sounds up your alley. I'm really glad that I got a chance to experience the whole collection. And last, I want to talk about The Helm of Midnight by Marina J. Lostadter. This is a fantasy story that's told over multiple points of view, one being an investigator who is dealing with the disappearance of a powerful magical mask that used to belong to a serial killer who has now been convicted and killed. And the mask has been stolen, which possibly will allow the serial killer murders to continue. The story is also told from two other perspectives, one being a young woman, who, and this story takes place at a different time. And then there's a third perspective, which gets introduced partway through the story, and I probably don't want to give away what that perspective is, but you can certainly guess. And you can probably imagine that a story like this appealed to me because while I am a fantasy reader, I'm also a fan of thrillers and horror, so I really like the idea of reading a piece of epic fantasy that was focused around a serial killer. As someone who reads so much of those dark genres, I'll be honest, this book was not as dark as I expected it to be. From other reviews, people describe this book as super dark and gruesome, and I did not find that to be the case, but I do acknowledge that I have a higher tolerance for those despicable things. Certainly, the serial killer does some nasty things and people die, but I didn't think it was very excessive. And there is a bit of a twist to the story, as you would expect with any story. And I didn't particularly love the direction it went because for me, it made the story a little bit less dark. So I enjoyed this one. I actually really liked the magic. I thought the idea of being able to imbue items with emotions, particularly a really interesting idea. And so I liked how that was explored. I liked the female inspector who was trying to track down what happened to the mask and that investigation was very compelling. So I will say that if you're like me and are used to reading a lot of crime fiction and thrillers and horror, this one won't be very intense and it more does read like fantasy, but if you're a bit squeamish about those things, yes, it definitely has those darker elements. It's just not as dark as I expect it to be. It definitely could go darker, but it is the beginning of a series and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. So that is it. We've made it to the end of the video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And please, the correct answer is that you're planning on reading The Rig. But honestly, pretty much all the other books I talked about, I really did enjoy. So I'd love to hear which books grabbed your attention. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of adult science fiction and fantasy and you can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, and hitting that little notification bell. Before you go, I would love to hear what is a science fiction or fantasy hidden gem that you don't hear anyone talk about online. I'm always looking for more under the radar books to read and hopefully recommend to all of you. So if you can give me recommendations, that definitely helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.